Meat pie has had a long history in American cuisine, but in the late 1920s, it became a major part of the middle class diet. You see, the 20s were a period of economic prosperity for many Americans, but it was also a time of heightened awareness about household budgeting, and meat pies were a cost effective way to stretch more expensive ingredients like meat, making them a practical choice for aspiring middle class families. And since we have a family of our own, we decided to give this old recipe a try in the 2020s. For this meat pie, the ingredients are simple. Starting from the beef, green peas, carrot, potatoes, onion, a little bit of flour, some seasoning, and of course pie. I was so amused because the pie recipe, the meat pie recipe, you can actually find in basically every English speaking country. Like Australia, they have their own version. Like the Great Britain, there are so many versions of that. And since that was one of the first dishes that is associated with American history, I believe it has plenty of influence from England and other European countries. Now, when we have like a mountain of beef, let's move to sautéing part. Now everything needs like a good stir and some time to be left alone. Approximately 20 minutes. We want to have the meat cooked but not overdone. Remember that's going to be baking for another like at least 55 minutes. I divide my cross portion for two. I think that the heavier one is going to the bottom. And now something that I'm good at, better than at cutting raw meat. So you want your pie crust to be not too thin, not too thick. In modern times you can make crust without using your hands, for example in blender, but this part, like rolling and making sure that it's not too thick, not too thin, I guess it still like needs a human touch. the crust. If you don't make these tiny holes, it might get too puffy, like pfft. Always want your crust to be like cooled down before you start working on that. So there it goes to the fridge. The 1920s saw the introduction and popularization of many convenience foods, including canned soups and refrigerated pie crusts. In other words, homemakers may have purchased a ready to go product and passed it off as homemade. These innovations made it easier to save time and for people to prepare meals at home. In fact, you didn't have to be a master chef, as recipes were included with the instructions on how to use the pre-made products. Following an overall trend set by cookbooks, radio shows, and home economic classes in an era that marked a shift towards more standardized, out-of-the-box cooking techniques. Now is the moment that everything happens at once. So we need to pre-bake the crust, then add a little bit flour to our stew with beef and veggies, then combine everything together, pour it onto the pie, put it the top layer, shuffle it to the oven and just wait for the magic to happen. We also need to point out that there were many regional variations of this dish, influenced by the cultural backgrounds of different communities. For example, in the south, you might find dishes like chicken and dumplings with a pastry crust instead of dumplings, Well, in the northeast, you'd find more French-Canadian inspired variations. Meat pies also have something of an illicit association. During Prohibition, when the sale and consumption of alcoholic beverages was illegal, some individuals got creative with their pies, calling them moon pies, which got their name from the notion that they were made under the light of the moon to avoid detection by authorities as they were served with illegal alcohol. 
While these pies were not exclusively meat pies, as they were sometimes filled with unconventional ingredients and even turned sweet, they were a major part of speakeasy food culture. When it came time for dinner, meat pie was often served as a hearty main course for family gatherings and frequently accompanied by side dishes like mashed potatoes and gravy, creating a filling and satisfying meal. But in our case, the pie is going to be enough. So the results are amazing. Not only does it look beautiful, we don't know if it actually, if the texture came out as it's supposed to, but the taste is spectacular. And the taste I, is amazing. I think mm -hmm. that if we go back to the 1920s and use our imagination for how it may have been, um, the wife in the house, waiting for the family all to come home, kids home from school, husband home from a hard day, you know, probably doing physical labor, this meal made a lot of sense because it's satisfying taste-wise, smell-wise, and- Very comforting. Comforting, exactly. Yeah. And it will keep you full, so you go to bed feeling very nourished, which is uh, and it's kind of a beautiful thing. Very beautiful thing, and in our version, we have like soup and pie <laughs> at the same time. Exactly. Mm. I mean, it's very good. people these days kind of demonize almost the traditional household of the 1920s up to the 1950s. I guess it all kind of changed in the 1960s, but uh, maybe I'm romanticizing here. I wouldn't mind. So it means that you want this dish like almost every day, huh? You are ambitious. Any dish will make me happy. Mm -hmm.